Good morning. Uh, great to be here. Uh, thanks for joining this morning. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, tokenization, uh, what I like to describe as the tokenization of everything and the role that uh, crypto tokens and the underlying infrastructure can play in reshaping the way that the global economic system functions. Um, I'm going to start, uh, obviously there's lots of different levels of awareness and knowledge here, but I'm going to start with kind of crypto basics uh, from my view uh, and then kind of transition into that topic. So first, just what is the kind of crypto revolution? Why are we so excited at Circle? Why are other people so excited? I think the first is just very clearly, this is a fundamental new layer of the internet's infrastructure. Public blockchains, in particular, provide an open, global, incorruptible, immutable, record-keeping system, transaction processing system, and secure computing environment. That's a pretty significant breakthrough for the world, uh, and lots of things can be built on top of that. The, the metaphor people like to use is sort of Web 1.0, Web 2.0 was all about, uh, you know, open, free, global exchange of data, information, communications. We all benefit from that uh, every day, constantly, all day. And crypto and what people call Web 3 is about value exchange, it's about governance, it's about trust, and building on that uh, fundamental innovation of public blockchain infrastructure. Um, why is, you know, th this, th this is very interesting for a number of reasons, but in particular, this is, I think, for the first time, a, a very deep, both technological and economic synthesis uh, on the internet, uh, where we're able to combine uh, fundamental economic incentives with open internet protocols uh, and sort of network schemes to create new forms of global platforms in finance and other industries that don't actually have a centralized government or corporation running them, and that's a major breakthrough for uh, society as a whole. Um, you know, what this portends, in our view, is essentially a reinvention of essentially every fiduciary and record-keeping industry uh, that we know of today. So what, is that, what does that really ultimately touch? So if you have this open, global, immutable record-keeping system, transaction processing system, and secure computing environment, you can reconceptualize on a global basis every aspect of finance, uh, ultimately the many, many aspects of what is accounting and audit and things like that, the entire insurance industry, uh, corporate and commercial law and the intermediation of contracts and financial contracts. Uh, crucially, um, all of the systems that we use today for decision making, whether that's the decision making around uh, what happens in a firm or the underlying uh, finances of a firm, i.e. the equity and votes, uh, or social decision making that happens more broadly at, at a civic level. Uh, can we use this infrastructure to fundamentally change how voting and governance uh, takes place? And then ultimately I think this touches what we experience as, as citizens in the world, which is um, record keeping around certification, certificates, public and civil services, etc., which are quite legacy in most parts of the world. All of these are things that we can basically reinvent and reinvent in the image of the internet in the same way that we reinvented uh, data and media and communications uh, in the, in the uh, image of the internet. Um, so a little bit more on the crypto basics uh, from our point of view. Um, we don't talk about cryptocurrencies, that, although as you can see here, cryptocurrencies is one category. We talk about crypto assets, and um, this is really important. Um, not every crypto asset is a currency. Uh, many crypto assets are more like utilities or commodities. Many crypto assets are uh, more like securities or financial contracts themselves. And so um, I want to kind of talk through, in our view, how to think about uh, these assets. And then that ties into this broader theme of the tokenization of, of, of everything. And what all of these have in common is that these are purely digital assets. Um, they're issued and mediated by these public blockchains, uh, generally speaking. And most of them have some kind of free-floating market pricing uh, and value and that are liquid and traded on a growing number of digital asset exchanges around the world. So the, the first and obviously the one that uh, most people think about is cryptocurrencies. And, um, you know, here we're talking about things like Bitcoin, but obviously it's a, it's a much broader space than just Bitcoin. And obviously if you're in this space, you know that, but for, if you're reading the popular press, you'd think that this is all Bitcoin, but but uh, it's, it's much broader. So I kind of break this into a few buckets. Uh, we have uh, what I think of as kind of privacy-focused uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, and I would include Bitcoin in that. It was designed as an anonymous, 
uh, digital cash uh, that can work independent of nation states, independent of corporations. That's just a, a public good on the internet. And then obviously there's been evolutions that improve that privacy or improve the throughput or other uh, transactional attributes of that, of that currency. Uh, so, so there's that piece. There are other cryptocurrencies that are really designed um, less to be a primary currency and more to be a kind of token that's used to settle transactions between other currencies and Ripple and Stellar are, are probably the best known examples of that. And then finally there's a, uh, what, what I think is a very, very critical piece of, of infrastructure in this space which are referred to as stable coins. So essentially cryptocurrencies that maintain uh, price stability. Uh, so you don't have price volatility. Uh, but you have price stability, and so if you're, say, creating a financial contract between two parties, whether that's in trade finance or a personal debt obligation or what have you, you can actually, you know, uh, denominate that. Uh, or a payment, for example, you could denominate that in, say, something like a U.S. dollar or a euro, but actually get all the benefits of crypto infrastructure, uh, the speed, the security, the global reach, the openness uh, that's there. And examples are things like Tether, uh, uh, U.S. dollar coin, which is something Circle's involved with, and then a number of, of, uh, of crypto-backed, uh, crypto uh, asset-backed uh, stablecoins. The second uh, kind of big bucket of crypto assets uh, that we think about is um, what we call crypto commodities. And uh, these are commodity-like assets in that they are designed to consume or utilize uh, some infrastructure resource or application. So their primary purpose is not as a currency, it's actually, it's, it's some consumption of some service or infrastructure. Um, the, the, the sort of most widely understood and known of these are, are things like Ethereum uh, and then other platforms, some of which have launched, some of which are just launching, some of which are uh, planning to launch later this year, which are trying to improve upon that idea of not just, um, you know, a currency, but actually creating a, a secure computing platform and a secure uh, transaction processing system that you could build lots of different types of uh, applications on top of. And Ethereum is probably the most popular today. It has the most developer traction. Um, and, and in our view, these are very, very ambitious projects um, and represent the most powerful new computing infrastructure on the Internet. Um, and it's in our minds, we think of them as sort of operating systems for the global economy. Um, and so really critical infrastructure. There are other types of crypto commodities. Um, I would include in that um, things like Filecoin, which is uh, a token used to consume distributed file storage, uh, and many other examples like that. And then um, we have what we call crypto securities, uh, AKA security tokens. Um, and these are essentially tokenized securities. So these are uh, crypto tokens that are essentially representing some rules-based financial contract. Uh, and these have fascinating capabilities uh, that go far beyond what you can do today, uh, in theory, uh, with a paper-based uh, financial contract that's mediated by a law firm and a court. And so security tokens are very exciting. A lot of projects that have quote-unquote ICO'd are really security tokens. They're offering a financial contract to participate in a business in some way. Um, and these, these crypto securities oftentimes merge uh, essentially financial value of some sort and utility value, some utility for, say, the governance of a project or a corporation or, or, or some other membership form. Um, and this is a, is, is a critical concept and very powerful. So how does that tie into the tokenization of everything? Um, in, in my mind, uh, we are at the very beginning of a quote-unquote tokenization of everything, where every form of asset, every form of value storage, every form of important record um, becomes a crypto token. And um, this includes a lot of different things. So what I would call financial tokens would be things like fiat currencies themselves will just be crypto tokens, like US dollar coin. Uh, equities or a contract for uh, an investment in a corporation that confers dividend rights or voting rights will become a crypto token. A bond, which is a debt obligation or a personal loan, will become crypto tokens. Um, and really any type of financial contract, including essentially bets on risk, like uh, insurance contracts, will also become crypto tokens. Um, there's also what we think of as property tokens. Um, and property tokens mean that today when you have, say, a house, uh, you have a title to the house and some government has a 
database or it's you know, a piece of paper in a folder somewhere, uh, and that's the actual house. The house is the title. It's not the actual physical property. It's the ownership of the asset. Um, property tokens uh, are really powerful as well. If I can tokenize my house or my car or art uh, or other personal property or even virtual goods like goods and games that you might want to trade, uh, and then you can build contracts around those and build financial relationships around those that are open and global and connected to the whole world economy. That's very powerful as well. And so we see tokenization of all physical property happening uh, over time as well. And then the last bucket I, I'm interested in is what I call decision tokens. And this is the tokenization of decisions, uh, votes, whether they're private votes or public votes, uh, in all forms of social governance. Um, we believe that the, the inherent benefits of a uh, immutable, incorruptible record-keeping system like a public blockchain is a far, far superior infrastructure for making decisions and keeping a record of those decisions and keeping people accountable to those decisions. So it really fundamentally changes the nature, ideally, ultimately, of global civic society. So what's needed to realize uh, this vision? Um, a number of pieces, and, and these are all very much emerging and underway. The first is just we need more mature and scalable public blockchains. You know, Ethereum is sort of a 1.0, uh, and we know there are limitations to how many transactions can run on it, how scaled out this can be, and the kind of phrase that people in the crypto industry talk about is like, when do we have a public blockchain that can support an app with a billion users? Once we have a, the ability to support an app with a billion users, then we can really, you know, ch change a, a lot of things. So there are a lot, a lot of projects going on here uh, to, to enable that kind of scale. A second key piece is fiat-backed stablecoins, and I'm going to talk in, in a moment a little bit more about why that's so important. The third is what we call um, token marketplaces. Today we have crypto exchanges like Binance, Poloniex, which is something Circle runs, uh, and others, which are marketplaces for these different types of cryptographic assets. But these marketplaces are going to need to evolve to support a much broader range of tokens. As you saw before, that tokens will represent a far greater number of types of things and are going to need to be you know, global marketplaces that have some form of regulatory clarity around them, which leads to the last point, which is things like security tokens or tokens for property. Ultimately, you're going to need you know, legal and regulatory clarity, case law, other things to establish these as you know, units that, that function in our economy. Um, and so that's an emerging area. And there's a lot happening in the United States on that front that we're very involved with. Um, I want to kind of punctuate um, the importance of fiat stablecoins in enabling this tokenization of everything. In order for crypto tokens to be adopted by mass society, we need these tokenized assets to be able to be denominated in fiat money. If I have a debt obligation to you, I don't want to denominate that in Bitcoin that is highly volatile. I'm, I'm maybe more comfortable denominating that in euros uh, or in dollars. Uh, if I want to have a security contract uh, where I'm investing in something and it's going to pay dividends, I want to know that I'm able to either collateralize that or, or receive those dividends in a fiat currency. And so if we have price-stable cryptocurrencies that are actually connected to central bank money, that really unlocks a lot of things. And so um, that's underway uh, from industry, uh, and, and we expect to see an enormous amount of progress on that in the coming weeks and months even as there are uh, higher and higher quality ways to uh, issue fiat stablecoins and use those on these networks uh, as well. Um, so one of the natural questions, of course, is, well, why tokenize everything? Why, why is this so important? Um, some of it is inferable from uh, what I talked about already, but just to, to punctuate this a little bit, um, first is that society itself deserves secure, incorruptible data and record-keeping systems. Uh, society deserves these record-keeping systems that are, uh, are incorruptible from human corruption, uh, that uh, allow for automation within enormous areas of civic and economic activity that are really prone to error and corruption. Um, tokenization of everything allows us to have fundamentally new avenues for sharing value globally, whether that's sharing value between people, we should be able to share value with each other the same way we can share a photo instantly, globally, for free, um, but also sharing in economic relationships that span every country in the world that are borderless in nature and that connect people in a trustworthy way to contract with each other in economic relationships, whether that's a labor relationship or a supply relationship 
or a, a, a some other type of investment relationship. So sharing value globally in the same way that we can share information and content. Um, transparency, part of the, the benefit of this infrastructure is that we have these public chains and with the right permissioning, you have an incredible degree of auditability and accountability on this, on this data in particular uh, that, again, is, is not prone to human error and corruption. And that kind of accountability in social and economic activity, whether it's in developing markets that are prone to corruption or in advanced markets where it's just incredibly cumbersome, burdensome, and expensive uh, to perform some of these tasks. And then finally, I think this just has to do with the, the, the inherent path that we're on as a global society of deeper integration around the world, uh, greater levels of global integration, not just information integration, but much more fundamentally deeper economic integration, which ultimately can rise up levels of wealth around the world and make our world a bit safer. So um, we're excited about this. I uh, hope you're excited about it too. Thank you for having me here today, and, and I'll be answering some questions shortly.